Well, good morning, everybody. I feel wrong not doing this since we're in Hawaii. So, aloha, everybody. Thank you. If you guys didn't say anything, I would make you good choice. I'm just kidding. Um, so, as our wonderful Lucy said, um, I'm an instructor in my daily life at UH Hilo. Anybody ever heard of UH Hilo? Oh, awesome. Cool. We're a small school, 3,000 people, um, very small campus, uh, big island, but small population. And like RMC said, I'm also the owner of Hinton Consulting. Um, just a really personal side hustle for me to help some of our local businesses on Hawaii Island be able to, you know, capitalize on a lot of the things we talked about. I'm super excited to be in front of this crowd. Usually my crowd is in jean shorts, but love the professional wear, of course. I'm super excited to share my experience and just um, let you guys know a little bit more about Hawaii through the digital lens, digital marketing lens. And the reason why I did this was because, well, I was like, first of all, gosh, what am I going to talk about in front of these people, the experts of digital marketing, where I'm an instructor teaching our freshman, sophomore, senior level students. And so I thought, well, the best way I can do this is by combining sort of the landscape, the physical landscape we have here to our digital landscape that all of us reside in today. Um, first of all, I would really like to apologize for the Okina being the wrong place. If you saw me, I tried to rush back and fix it, but could not. Oh, so mad at myself. But let me do some participation. Um, who's been to Hawaii before? Yay! Okay. And then what about Oahu? Yeah, been to Oahu before. What about Maui? Oh my gosh, what about Hawaii Island? <laughs> I like I don't think you. Um, okay. Any other places, any other of the less populated islands we've been to? Molokai, of course. Hawaii, of course. Wow, what a well-traveled audience. So those of you guys that have been to multiple islands know just as well as I do, Hawaii is a vastly different landscape, right? From island to island, the people you meet, the experiences you have are so different. And the reason why I bring that up is so are the so is the landscape we are all professionally in, right? I'm sure a lot of you client your clients ask you, what's the best way? How do I get the best results? Which channel should I use? What should my content strategy be? And what do you usually tell them? It depends, right? Who are you trying to reach? Where do you want to go in your business? Where is strategy taking you? And so it's sort of, I, when I started thinking about this, I really thought of this just way to look at our large landscape as well as the landscape of digital marketing. Um, from the outside looking in, sort of how do we, you know, for example, market to the visitors that come to Hawaii and may not be sure which island to go to, or even as most of you guys that reside here know, there's a lot of sustainable, cultural, and all of these different things um, that could potentially be, you know, not cohesive to travel. Okay. Um, and so this is where we're going today. And so in 2019 um, survey, 68% of visitors to Hawaii were repeat visitors. Um, and I don't know if this number is surprising to you, but when I first saw it, it was super surprising to me. 68% of people who come here are repeat visitors. Um, if that was in digital marketing world, that would be fantastic, right? That would be lots of return users, lots of good clientele. And so what were the big reasons? Number one, natural beauty. Uh, number two, relaxation, the slower pace. Number three, embracing our culture. Um, I live on Hawaii Island, like I said. And we have one of the biggest hula, hula festivals, not the big, one of the biggest, it is the biggest hula festival in the world, um, Mary Monarch. Anybody heard of Mary Monarch? Oh, good, yay. Um, and so one of the biggest reasons people do come is for culture. 
And I will say, when Mary Monarch comes around, Milo is not the town that you see on an everyday basis. It becomes fuzzy, it's super fun, lots of shopping, lots of cultural events, great stuff. And then, of course, being active. Um, so those were the top four reasons. And so how do digital strategies fit in? And so for those of us that live here, I want to use this as an opportunity to celebrate all the amazing digital marketing strides that we've made. Um, I think it's quite amazing that we've gone through eruptions, we've gone through protests, we've gone through COVID, the pandemic, and we're still here today and we're still one of the most desirable um, locations for travel. Um, and I think part of that is the some of the people in here today that really, really put in the work to communicate, to think about digital marketing strategies uh, when it comes to flight. And so number one, right, the natural beauty. How does digital, how do digital strategies fit into this, right? Natural beauty um, through building transparency and by partnering with different review apps, review sites, and even influencers. And so natural beauty, of course, it means going to the different monuments, going to the different parks, maybe going on an off the beaten path. Anybody love the off the beaten path travel style, right? It could mean all of those different things. But we all know also the repercussions of perhaps some of those activities. And so to build transparency by partnering with these different marketing resources um, is the great way to embrace natural beauty while preserving it. Um, relaxation. Uh, I oftentimes uh, have international students from Japan, and my favorite question always is to ask them, what's your favorite part about Hawaii? And it's, what do you guys think they would say? Like beaches? Was it? Sleep. They overwhelmingly tell me, fresh air, space, just... <sighs> Right, that feeling of letting some of the responsibilities go. And so relaxation, um, but that has to complement with harmonizing federal, state, and lo local messages to have cohesive marketing. And so I like to say, you know, relaxation, all visitors come here for, or a majority of them come here for this reason, which I think is funny because for me, travel is one of the most stressful things out there. Right, and so digital strategies has tons to do with it, and our tourism agencies, as well as marketers in Hawaii, have done a lot to make sure that we keep this relaxation state through convenience, understanding, and communication, um, embracing culture uh, through digital and sustainable in-person experiences. Um, I really recommend uh, if you guys haven't been to Kilauea before. Um, to do a arts and cultural, arts and food culture Google tour of Kilauea. Um, it's beautiful, 360 expansion with a great explanation of the story and history um, behind Kilauea. I think it's a great digital marketing tool for those who are visiting before or even to entice them to visit. And then finally, being active by getting better at using data to track visitor locations and preferences. And so I thought that that was another really big thing to look at. Um, I'm sure you guys have all read, you know, Venice, Italy um, is doing lots to control their crowds, to be able to let visitors back in safely while making sure residents feel comfortable, et cetera. Um, I think that it's really crucial to start looking at some of those strategies um, and implementation of digital marketing to track and prefer and preference. And so... A islands, all extremely unique, you know, demographically, psychographically, and behaviorally. Um, this is kind of how we look at our visitors. We have those who are traveling with their families. We have those who are romance seekers, looking for that secluded beach. Uh, we have foodies who are looking for all the divine food that Hawaii has to offer. Um, we have those who love outdoor adventures cultural and historical aficionados. We have our shoppers, our nature lovers, health and wellness enthusiasts, which I feel like, especially on Hawaii Island, has become 
so much of a bigger target market. And I'll talk about this later on, but attracting the sustainable traveler, um, attracting the person who's looking for that uh, less of a footprint experience. Not only that, accommodations and amenities, hotels, Airbnbs, hostels, off-grid, camping, camper van accommodations, things like that. Um, museums, botanical gardens, zoos, beaches, mountains, volcanoes. One in three visitors to Hawaii visit a botanical garden while they're here. Um, and so again, I'm just kind of highlighting like the expansiveness, the opportunities to market, but also the opportunities for matchmaking, um, which is what I really want to focus on, kind of using digital marketing as a tool to match visitors with the right experience. And I want that 68% number to go up even more um, because there is a value in the repeat visitor, someone who's been here before, who knows the culture, who knows the community. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I'm gonna head to today. And of course, my favorite question, business or pleasure, but that means so many things, right? Conference travel, solo business travel, college graduation trip, bachelorette, bachelor party, honeymoon, baby moon, retreat, right? The list goes on. And so all of this while directing visitors physically to their perfect destination. Um, so, you know, I think, again, I, I'm so happy that a lot of people are living in Hawaii or in this room because, you know, we're a part of this change um, that's occurring within marketing and within travel destination marketing. No longer are we just sending as many people as possible without considering target demographic, without considering um, the opportunities for digital marketing. And so... First, I'm, I'm just highlighting three because we don't have enough time. <laughs> uh, but Oahu, for example, city life, the beach, there's always something new to do at all hours. The key here is how do you match make activities with a wide array of international visitors? Most international visitors also visit Oahu, Honolulu area. And so there's a wrench in the plan, right? Different languages different preferences for social media, all of those different things. And so the number one digital marketing strategy I wanted to highlight was um, nightlife and the dining variety. I'm sure if you guys are in populated areas, you know of public dining experiences, unique dining experiences, things like that. Um, if you walk down Waikiki, you know, that is no longer the only option to have reservations out the window, to have book tables every night. Um, you can, for example, this is a speakeasy and it's behind an Aloha May machine. It's behind a vending machine. And so places like this through influencer marketing and things like that are able to not be in the crowded physical location, but still be able to garner the attention and, and of course, revenue. Number two, um, provide relation building, relationship building tools for businesses offering a luxury shopping experience. Um, I all encourage you guys to visit Mana Up. Uh, Mana Up is a, it's a location here uh, on Waikiki Street, I believe. Gosh, I was looking at it yesterday, but I was too late. I was like, no, I was running. Um, but they're one of the, I guess you could call more of them like an accelerator type um, programs that have started, but they take um, local vendors from all over Hawaii and help them with all digital marketing strategies. Um, they even have like a Facebook Live sort of, I call it like the old school, you know, shopping network where someone comes on and shows like six different things and people call in. But of course, it's all e-commerce, right? So providing relationship building tools for businesses, offering this luxury shopping experience. Um, not that I don't love going into the luxury stores, right, on Kalakaua, but I think it's really important to integrate local businesses into that experience. Assist families and memorable, fun experiences from when they're booking their adventure to arrival. Um, one of the biggest groups of tourists we're seeing today are um, from Korea. And actually, it's because Korea has been running some special promotion bundle deals uh, through their social media channels that offer uh, booking, 
hotel accommodations, tra transportation, travel accommodations, and even things like little goodie packs, they mail to you before your trip. And so you have all local Hawaii goodies to bring with you and snack on the plane, all that good stuff. Um, and so I think assisting families and memorable fun experiences also crucial. Um, and of course, things like museums and monuments have forever been changed because of digital marketing, right? Using video content, social media content as a tool, not only to explain the historical significance of places, but only also to attract uh, visitors. Maui. Uh, Maui, I like to say, has the big city amenities, but it still has that sort of country feel to it. There's not, you know, looking out and seeing tons of skyscrapers. Not that I don't love that. Um, you probably saw me shopping around yesterday with lots of bags. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's still this big city amenities with a country feel. I also think Maui is pretty romantic. I would say if you're a romance seeker, that is where I would recommend you go. Uh, but it has quickly risen in popularity. Um, so second to Honolulu, second to Oahu, Maui is uh, very well traveled. And so whether it's, you know, uh, the Hana Highway and seeing the overcrowded um, roads, the congestion, um, we've done multiple things to try and sort of alleviate that issue, of course, physically from using tour buses, but also um, working with influencers to sort of show like the IG versus reality, right? It's kind of interesting to think about this, but using this as a tool to direct, to direct tourists or to direct visitors on their choices. Um, romance seekers, packages with digital and in-person amenities, especially for special occasions, and then target visitors with most probability to enjoy and uh, preserve Maui. And then of course, on my island, Hawaii Island. Uh, so first, right, meet the adventures where they are on outdoor review sites, apps of the apps on the trail, and more. Um, so again, it's kind of this interesting conundrum, right? All off the grid, off the beaten path travelers who come to Hawaii are looking for that experience that no one else has, right? And so we've run into a lot of issues with you know, people posting trails that are private property um, and all of these different things. So I actually think using this as a digital marketing tool um, would be significant. Um, understand the cultural and natural significance of the volcano through digital experiences. Like I mentioned in the first slide, special events like Mary Monarch, digital content opportunities and utilizing social media influencers. Uh, to do, introduce unique accommodations. Um, and so again, with the rise of our alternative travelers, people who want to rent camper vans, people who want unique locations, um, again, a great digital marketing opportunity. And so it, you're appealing to visitors looking for a vast, um, more rugged, off-grid adventure with an authentic community. And so I say like how to assist the solo traveler um, to stay safe and Malama Aina, which means give back uh, to the land. Um, so, by the way, if you are traveling here, anybody heard of this phrase or saw a campaign, Malama Aina, when they were coming here? Yeah, you need to do a better, a better job of that. No, that's a, that's a major issue. A lot of visitors said, oh, that's interesting. I wish I would have known this before I came. And so Malama Aina is the, or Malama Hawaii is a program started by a state agency to essentially consider the impact on Hawaii on our resources and be able to specifically advertise opportunities to visitors who are looking to give back. Um, so, but essentially the program is like this. There's all these different experiences on different islands. Um, you might be asked to clean up a beach. You might be asked to, you know, um, preserve a historical area. You might be asked to help clean our awesome and expansive fish pond. I've done that before. My back hurt for five days after. And so 
providing these types of experiences for visitors who are looking to give back. I'm targeting visitors who are looking at all these different locations, all these places they could travel to, and picking Hawaii because of its sustainability. Um, and so digital ways for visitors to participate. Um, this, there's plenty of examples of this. Um, this is not just digital content for all of these things that are happening, but also, you know, we've seen these types of text campaigns where you could answer survey questions and be able to donate, where you can work with business organizations, nonprofit organizations um, for digital ways for visitors to participate. Um, I also think it's really important before visiting, you know, we do so much to find the best flight, to do all of these things, but um, what about digitally targeting right customers, the right uh, visitors for the right places? There's also in-person touch point and incentives through business and airline partnerships. Um, so if you participate in one of those programs, you can actually get a one night free at not this hotel, but quite a few locations on the island. So if you participate in this program and you stay with them four nights, they'll give you one night free. So in-person touch points um, and incentives through business and airline partnerships. Also influencer groups, um, and digital stories to capitalize the unique experiences. Um, I think that's one of the key points to be able to spread Malama Hawaii because as you guys see, coming here, a lot of you guys didn't know about this program. And then finally, search engine marketing strategies to target sustainably driven visitors. I'm sure you guys all know this, but the, the keywords and the, the, the key terms that we think of as a visitor, um, it's become an expanding world, right? Now, what about our romance seekers? What about those that are looking for sustainable travel, right? There's a whole new group uh, of terms that we can use to describe and capitalize those. Um, so that's it. This is my information. Anybody, I finished super quickly. I'm a quick talker. <laughs> um, anybody have any questions? I got a question. Cool. Um, do you have any examples of organizations, companies who are doing a good job of this right now? A good job of sort of implementing these tech, these um, strategies in Hawaii. Yeah, um, gosh, good is hard to describe because I think they're just starting off. But one of the organizations I would like to rec recognize, they're in Hilo and it's SCP Hotel. Um, so they're actually they have locations all over the world, but they're a application only accommodation and so you actually have to submit an application you have to tell them about who you are you have to tell them about what kind of experience you're looking for and they actually accept applicants based on like what they're looking to do in the community how much time are they looking to volunteer and all that good stuff but i think that's like wow you know that's like you are really sticking to your you know metaphorical guns on this yeah. So uh, from, from a search standpoint, oh, the British. <clears throat> from a search standpoint, um, and from a content marketing standpoint, um, what, what advice might you have for marketers that are struggling to get more eyeballs on their original content versus, I imagine, there's like a, just a whole host of people who have perfected the listicle content and pay to play if you want to be on this list of 15 best places, 20 best restaurants, right? 20 things to do. Um, how do you cut through that noise without necessarily having to play nights nice with, with those um, uh, affiliate partnerships? partnerships, partnerships yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's tough. Because I think at the end of the day, the content that works is what people are looking at. And so it's sad to say, but I look at listicles and I live there, you know? And so to answer this question, I will say one, I do participate in that type of content. You know, when I'm making my own content, I always think about like, versus let's say advertising at this poke restaurant from 1936. Right, I think about five best places to get food, and I feature one of those things. And I know that's like, oh, yuck. But <laughs> at the same time, that's 
where content is going. And so, yeah. Helen, do you think it would be, um, do you think it's a, a strategy to have, you know, people who do want to create original content about that to just leverage those listicles and just regurgitate that, you know, whether it's on a TikTok or an Instagram reel or something, just leverage that work that's already been done and, I don't know, use that in their original content might work as well. The, the more I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking in terms of like, you know, this, despite how clever we all think we are, word of mouth is still like the best form of marketing any company or restaurant or anything could ask for. Um, maybe there's types of ways to facilitate those connections between, you know, honest uh, content creators and influencers and people seeking that information. For maybe, sure. Yeah, well, first I would say like the brand, like our our brand marketing portfolio itself has totally changed. It used to be logos, photos, sayings, colors, fonts. Now it's TikTok videos. What kind of content do you have? What have you been featured on before? Now it's like a list of all these things. And I think all that is to help or to assist in this sort of effort of this is what we look like. This is what you guys look like. Now we can, you know, communicate with each other. Um, and I will say like, the state, for example, has a list of 25 influencers who live on the island who have contracts to one's a foodie, one's a natural nature lover, one's an ultra marathoner. And they're all there to produce this type of content to promote Malama Aina, to promote, you know, sustainable travel. And so, yeah, I mean, we have, there's a list to participate with. So I think, yeah, the somewhere in the middle. Cool. Uh, what are your thoughts on using local influencers rather than um, bringing in influencers who have no clue or context of the place that, um, like Hawaii or different islands? Mm. And how do you how do you give a platform to um, locals and give them a space to tell their story on their island? Mm. Good question, good question. I think it's totally two different content. Um, for our local influencers, you know, the t content I think is more authentic. You live here, you're spearfishing with your dad, you're, you know, going up to the mountains with your cousins, like you're doing, you're living versus visiting. And so I think there's a place for everything. I think it's all about communication and direction. Um, and so I will say this, you know, trying to think of how to say it. it's it's a struggle right um a lot of it, a lot of people who live here are not necessarily like arms open right and so i really like mentioning malama aina because i think it's one of the first things i've seen where we've tried to bridge the gap a little bit um invite local influencers and by local storytellers um along with introducing more of this out of town social media influencer. And I think the power is together. Um, and as Hawaii, we're finally, I think, realizing the space for both. I think. I hope that answers. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, thank you, Helen. Thank you.